All right, now that we have got access to WeVideo through our Google login and created a blank area to work, let's take a look real quick at the interface. This area on this side is called the media window. Here you can change from the different areas along the top, going to your media, adding text, audio files, transitions, and graphics. We're going to start in the media and let's actually upload some of the images that we saved previously in step two through the process of finding the photos we want online, getting them through advanced searching, finding the large size images and saving them. Here they're in a folder on my Google Drive called movie. In order to get access to these we'll have to go ahead and download them to the computer. To access these and put these into WeVideo, we'll go to the media area, import media, browse to select, and we'll go to our Google Drive folder. Here's our Google Drive file stream. Open up the My Drive folder and then find the folder that contains your photos. My example is labeled movie. You can select one at a time or if you hold the shift key you can select a range of pictures. If you hold control you can actually click in between other photos to add them as well. I'll open these up. You can see them coming into the media area inside of WeVideo. When I click on a photo, I'll be able to see a preview in the document monitor to the side. To build my movie and create my multimedia movie from start to finish, I will use the timeline down below. Here you have two video layers and one audio layer. You can add more if needed, which we'll talk about further, or delete them if you don't need them. In order to start, all you simply have to do is take and begin to drag your images down to the video one track, drop them in the order that they need to be seen. Looking at your planning page to figure out exactly what would be the order of how these pictures are going to show up from the beginning of my project all the way to the end. As I drag the timeline indicator across these you can see them show up in the preview monitor up above. If we look at the timeline, there's also, through the playhead viewer, a set of numbers. This corresponds to the time of how long your project is going to play. You also see that right below, the current position of where we are in our project and how long the project might be. The first set of numbers refer to frames per second. So don't worry about this number. The second number refers to the number of seconds my project is and the third number refers to the number of minutes my project is. Your project will have to be at least two minutes in length or up to three minutes and 30 seconds in length. If I press play I can go ahead and watch and see my current images appear. By default, when you take something and drag it down to the timeline, those images will be there for five seconds. That number can be altered shorter or longer by you, depending on how you want your images to appear. As it gets to the very end, you can see that we are currently at 25 seconds into the project. At this point, no editing has been done other than just dragging and adding my images in the order that I'd like them to be seen. 
Now let's take a look at how to incorporate and use text in the project. Inside of WeVideo, in the text editor, we have different preset text arrangements with different fonts, different colors, which can be altered by you up at the very top as well. These preset text effects have animations applied to them. In order to see this, if I simply click on one, you can see the text appear fading in and fading out, different effects with lines and colors. Again, all of these can be altered with your information for your project. The bottom of the list has some basic text. These are not animated, but they can be animated later in the process manually by you. There's also an end credits basic text editor that will allow you to add the credits at the end of your movie, similar to the ending of a movie, where text can be animated and scroll from the bottom to the top. To use any of the text elements, simply drag it and drop it down to one of the video layers, making sure that it's green. If it's red with a box around it, it means it can't add it to that spot. Simply drag it over a little bit and let it go when it has the green box. To edit any of these text elements, simply double click on this in the layer for that text. Type out what you're interested in saying, change your font, change it to bold, other different elements with color, background colors, size, placement can be done simply by moving the text. Click on the animation tab at the top and have the text animate from a starting position to an ending position. Let's say we want the text to begin rather small and the ending position to be a little bit larger and in a different location. So we have a starting position and an ending position. If we hit play, we can see the animation take place. When you're satisfied, hit Done Editing. If you scroll back to Playhead and press play, you can now see your text and the you can now see the text and the te you can now see the text and the edits you've made. To change anything of the order, simply click and drag to move your elements in the timeline. Down below, you have a zoom magnification of the timeline. So if you click and drag, you'll be able to see these scenes of your movie larger or repeated over and over. This will help when you have elements that are very, very short in terms of the time. If the magnifying tool is very small, it might become very hard to select to edit anything inside of this area. Zooming out will allow you to be able to see it. Double click to edit. And also will be able to extend the time length or duration of that scene. If you would like to add text above a photograph instead of coming after a photograph, the way to achieve this easily is to use the Video 2 track. Take any of your elements where you'd like this to appear, drag them up, over, 
again, adjust the timing of this particular scene to be as long as you'd like for one image. Or if it's longer text, it's maybe extended for multiple images. To edit the text, again, simply double click to go to the text properties, type out, in this case, maybe a title. Again, adjust your font, your size. We'll hit done editing. And now, when the movie plays, you'll be able to see the text appear on top of, in this case, two separate images. This is an easy way to achieve to add text above a photo. This covers the basics of utilizing and working with the media that you've added, being able to preview and see what you're putting together, and different elements in the timeline. Now, your job is to create what's called the rough cut of your movie. This is found in step six in the step-by-step -step instructions. A rough cut is a very basic starting point. Basically, you're going to incorporate your images, your text, and put them into the order you want them to be seen from the beginning of your project to the end. A finished rough cut shouldn't take very long to produce and it would look something like this. There's no advanced features being used at this point. It's just the order of my images that I want them to be seen and any text elements that I want from my facts that I found from my project. The editing component will be done to enhance the overall finished project with various features in my project coming up. Once your rough cut has been completed, we will now take this project and work with advanced features found in upcoming steps along the way to complete the overall project. Once your rough cut is complete, please let me know and I'll direct you on the next set of steps to continue working on your project.